on today's Hope Today, we are taking a moment to pause to talk about something that's very serious. One of the greatest gifts God has ever given to man is the imagination. How has social media played a role in shaping our imagination? And how does God want to use the platform of social media and our imagination to make our generation the greatest generation ever to walk the face of the earth? All that and more on today's Hope Today. Today, I imagine you're having a good day today, and I hope that you, as we go into this, uh, what you just heard Pastor Jay say, talking about our imagination, godly imagination, and what that is like. There's a positive there. <laughs> Pastor Jay, there also can be a negative. There can be. You know, the imagination is, deals in the realm of the unseen. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that the imagination is one of the greatest things that God has ever given to us? but it can be used for bad and it can be used for good. You know, Tom, I even think about uh, fear and faith. They both deal right. in that arena of the imagination yeah. and how we shape that, whether it's through media, through knowledge, through the word of God, all determines on how we use that and our imagination creates our world around us. Well, it's really true. And you know, th this is uh, this is tied into what's going on in, in my family's life is this is Henry, my grandson, his first day of kindergarten, first day stepping out past the day into the wider world, yeah. right? Into that, that, you know, of course he went to like a preschool, but this is, this is, this is like really getting out there to where all kinds of influencers are going to come his way. And this is the generation that has media like just poured into them from all different places. Henry can fi work his way around, uh, you know, the, the the videos he wants to see with supervision <laughs> on YouTube and everything. He's he's like, you know, they're good at that stuff. You know, it's amazing how this generation is that way. My son, I have an eight and a six year old. They're in school right now, and it's amazing on how they do. They navigate through that. They'll go to my wife and say, "Let me show you how to fix the computer and how to tap." Like I said, to Roku and how to tap. And they're, I mean, just messing with everything. That's the imagination that they have. God, see, it's not a curse to have this technology. Right. It's, it's the platform itself. I want everybody to hear that this is important. The platform of social media, the platform of Roku, the platform of Facebook and Twitter, they're not bad. It is what is being presented that we must be aware of, Tom. And our kids are being influenced by that. Absolutely, and of course, you know, the dark side of this is pornography and things that, that so many people struggle with, so many that have been captured. We, we've heard different statistics of how that's in the church. And those things need to be, well, look, those, our phones aren't going away. Our computers aren't going away. We as Christians need to be able to handle this, to understand how to have a godly use of these things. We're gonna be talking about that today. As, as we go into this though, I wanna remind you that we have prayer partners standing by. There's always prayer partners available. The number's there on your screen. You can pray with them. Maybe you know someone who's struggling. Maybe you have a child going to school and you're wondering, okay, they're going to public school. All they've ever known is church. Now they're going to public school. What, what, is, what is it gonna be for them? What kind of influences are gonna be their way? You know, there, there's so much that can, that we can't retreat from the world, Pastor Jay. We're gonna live in the world, but we have to be able to use everything in a godly way. Well, you know, I think the scripture comes to mind, you know, he's always praying and I want y'all to know we've bathed this time in prayer. And I believe that today what we're discussing is really going to be a benefit to you. If you have children, grandchildren, uh, maybe you're a man or woman, it affects all of us. We are in, you know, you can't be Fred Flintstone no more. You know, you can't be pedaling around with your feet. This is a different generation. But this is what, to your response, Tom, uh, the Bible says where sin abounds, grace does that much more abound. Yeah. And I'm sensing in my spirit today for many of you that are battling with technology, many of us are addicted to our phones. We're trying to figure out how do we navigate through this social media. I sense right now that there is an elevation of grace in the midst of this thing. God wants us to be able to manage it. He wants us to be able to use it for a platform to preach the gospel, but he doesn't want the culture to influence us. We need to be influencing the culture. And that's where his grace comes into a play. You know, uh, it's interesting. I saw a video 
where someone was talking about how you shouldn't talk to someone like this. Don't talk to them like, hey, can we have a few minutes together? Let's just talk. I want to talk to you about something. Don't talk to them like this because it's, it's sort of saying, hey, this right here is more important than my time with you because I, if I get a call here, I'm going to stop talking to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or even to put it down on, like right now, my light, my screen came on. I don't know why my screen came on, <laughs> but I, I got a show to do here with Pastor Jay. I'm not going to check my screen. But if we said it, even when we say, hey, let's have, let's have a, a discussion about something, say it's related to work or anything, if, if it's laying there, that's, a, that's an interrupter. So we have really to know is. how to put that, put that away and say, now nah, tell me, Tell me what's going on. You know what I mean? We have yeah. to have that, that, uh, you know, that, that ability to, to lock down things that are distractions because distractions is a big part of this age. You know, Tom, I'm, I'm looking today and like you have your Bible here and I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but he has a Bible here on this platform. Uh, what happened to books? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not against right. Kindle and all those things, but there's something about highlighting and writing in a book. Absolutely. You know, there's something about getting into those scriptures and into those pages. And a lot of time we use that phone for everything. I wonder if every once in a while, if we should fast our media. Yeah. I mean, as a church even, to get back into the scriptures, to, to dig back into the word that we don't allow social media. Because listen, you can't allow YouTube and, and Facebook to become the only truth you receive. Now let me say this, nothing wrong with being on YouTube, nothing wrong with being on Facebook, but be careful that that, does not, that is not the only tool that you use to shape your truth. Tom, I wonder if some degree that the phones and technology and YouTube has been a replacement for us digging into the scriptures. Now we don't have to study. We don't need to dig it for ourselves. Let's just listen to see what's that new revelation that somebody else has. Let's yeah. listen to what, well, what, what is so-and-so preaching? God wants to speak to you that you can go on YouTube and on Facebook and declare the oracles of God. But we can't allow social media to make us lazy that we don't get back into the Word well, of God. you know, I, I'm trying to pick up my Bible here because <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've been using the same Bible for decades, okay? So I've got notes in here. I've got, I got things underlined. I've got sticky notes with sermons on them. I've got all kinds of things in here because this, is, this has been everywhere with me. And, and I've dug into the Word of God mm. here in this, this paper, you know, several, maybe a thousand pages of paper here that I carry around. And it's like, that is an amazing bit of technology, this book. Now, so many people, it's on their phone and that's perfectly fine, however you read the Word of God. Amen. But there is something about what yeah. Pastor Jay just said about getting into the Word of God, having it. I just read a note today, because I put dates, started putting dates on my notes a few years back. And I can remember what, I, what the God, God was speaking to me then because I have a note there with the date on it. I can remember what I was praying for then because I have a note with the date on it. it. There's something about that life of faith in this paper book here. There's nothing magic about the paper, but the words of God are what are, are, are special and what kind of stay with me. We're getting all over the place here, Pastor all Jay. Right. I, I want you to you know, take the lead wherever you want to go with this discussion. We well, you know one of the things uh, I want you to realize, God gave me a word for this moment that I believe is paramount for you and for everybody that's watching. If you have children, grandchildren, I want you to DVR this right now because I believe what I'm about to share with you is gonna be impactful in your life. And I believe that this is the Daniel generation. This is the imagination generation. God wants it, watch this, are you ready? I hope you are because I believe God's got something very special. Don't you be discouraged about where your grandchildren are. Don't you be discouraged about where your children are. God is getting ready to use them in a way that is going to blow your mind. But the devil wants to use the social media platform, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all the other things, TikTok and all those things. For what reason? Watch this. To unsanctify their imagination. You know what's amazing? In the story of Daniel, Tom, when we read through it, I think every believer should read through the book of Daniel in the season and study it. I believe it is paramount that we study the life of Daniel because that's where we are as a church. Right. We see the story of Nebuchadnezzar, and he builds this huge image and tells everybody to bow down and to worship it. Think about what social media does. Think about what YouTube does. Now, all of it's not bad. 
but we have to be discerning on what is good and what's not good. We got to be discerning on what our kids are watching and what we're watching and what we allow to influence our imagination because out of our imagination is our creative ability. And if it's influenced by things that are negative, by pornography, by sexual things, by gambling and all sorts of untruths, but not bathed in the word of God, the devil wants to pervert the minds of the young people because they are going to be the Daniels of this generation. What is amazing, Tom, is this. Nebuchadnezzar builds an image and tells everybody to worship it and revolves it all around music. But then you have a man like Daniel. Can I talk to some Daniels that are out there? There are some Daniels, your kids are Daniels, your grandkids, that you're saying, why are they so much into technology? They are Daniels. Listen, what the Lord spoke to me. He said, this is the generation that I am unlocking their imagination for such a time as this. He told Daniel at the end of the Bible, or the end of the book, he said, lock these things up until the time. I'm prophetically declaring to you, this is the time that God is unlocking the imagination and the devil wants to come in with media to pervert that. Why? Notice this, Tom. When Nebuchadnezzar had the, rev- or had the, uh, the image that he built, Daniel gets the most creative, innovative revelations that we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm talking about a beast comes out of the sea with 10 horns. Yeah. Now, tell me that's not an imagination. Right. He talks about the, uh, the, there, there's a beast that comes out and has the feet like a bear and the wings like an eagle and yeah. all those types of things. And, and he begins to get one of the greatest revelations for the end time. I believe we need to be careful. And the reason why we're doing this show like this is because we need to be on guard, Tom, to make sure we're protecting our imagination. Because I believe this generation, Henry, my sons, are going to be the greatest innovators and creative people. We cannot allow what's happening in social media to influence their thinking in a negative facet. You know, I heard somebody say one time, we have, we have the greatest amount of information that any generation has ever had right in our pockets, and what do we use it for? We use it to watch silly cat videos. Yeah. Now, nothing wrong with Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with the good, funny, silly cat videos, but I will say this, we need to be those people that uh, will sanctify our imagination. Yeah. What did, I go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, Pastor Jay. What did, what did uh, the Lord do with Adam? He said, He brought the animals to him to see what the man would name him because there's there's that divine imagination he put in Adam. He didn't bring him to say, this is what they're, he didn't tell him their name. He let Adam name them because he gave him an imagination. He gave him the ability to do that. We have a divine imagination. You have a divine. Think of all the creative ways that you can reach your neighbor. That's what, I mean, yeah, that's what yeah. we, our, our call, right? It's a great commission to preach the gospel. We're not all preachers, but we're all people that can share the love of God somehow, some way. There's creative ways to do that. Now, interestingly, getting back to social media, we don't talk to our neighbors too much because we're on social media. So there's things that are are robbing us of the ability to use that imagination. You're right. You're right. And that whole virtual world, which virtual I found out means almost real. So you have to be careful about virtual because virtual, if it's almost real, it can also mean almost true. You know, what's amazing about the imagination when Eve is in the garden. Now check this out, ladies and gentlemen, when Eve is in the garden, God tells her and Adam tells Adam, but then Adam translates it to her. Don't eat of the tree, for in the day that you eat it, you'll surely die. She has a conversation with Satan. And the Bible says when she saw that it was good for food. The question is that you have to ask yourself, what is influencing you and your children, your family, your home? Be careful of the movies you watch. Be careful of what you're letting into your house. Why? Because what you will let into your mind through this imagery that's happening on Facebook and media and Twitter is going to shape your belief systems. When she listened to Satan, she began to see what God called good or evil, good. And what does the Bible say? That in the end times, Tom, they would call good evil and evil good. Well, it's happening like crazy. And we can all think about the way that different different social media things have affected us. All you have to do is go to politics and you go on this yeah. social media, everybody's saying this, you go on this social media, everybody's saying that. There's all kinds of things that, that are happening. Nobody's sharing, like, I, I wonder sometimes, Jay, what happened to the, the love of God sometimes in, in Christians when they, mm-hmm. they get into politics and they, they start sharing all kinds of kind of hurtful things really just because it's, it's towards the other side or what they deem the ungodly side. 
We need to be the people of God, have the character of God, whether we're online, face to face, on the telephone, what we watch, we have to have the character of God in all those things. God wants to build inside of us the, the, His character. And you know what? It's not always there. It's, a lot of times it's a battle to have the, the right attitudes towards someone that, that harmed us, to right, have the right attitudes towards someone that's from a group we don't like. We have to be the people of God and show the love of God in all situations. And he's trying to build that inside of us. What happens with social media is it desensitizes us. Look, pornography desensitizes yes. Yes. that other person. Yeah. It's, it's all, now it's, it's like that person's a drug or something that you're using. But social media can do that just to someone you disagree with. It can desensitize you completely and to where that person becomes a caricature rather than a real person. And you know, you mentioned about social media and about dealing with people, you know, we have to understand that we need relationships in this day and hour. Even think about overcoming pornography and things along that line. We need relationships in order to keep us accountable. You know, these are, these are tough topics to discuss, ladies and gentlemen. Right. These are difficult situations, but they are what we're all facing in this day and in this hour. And I believe that God wants to do something in the minds of his people in this season. I believe it's time to return back to the word. I believe it's time to return back to family Bible studies. Yeah. I believe it's time to put yeah. the Bible back yeah. into our homes. Right. I believe it's time we're working with our children now to where as right. they read, then they get electronics and different things with the media. Wow. It's not just that, it's, it, because think about it, we've lost, we, now we need pictures for everything. Why? Because we've lost the ability to exercise imagination, to take a book like this and to read through it and allow our minds to begin, the imagination, allow God to speak to our minds versus allowing just everything in media to activate it. Let me tell you this, God wants to speak to you and to your children through dreams, through visions, but it is important that you have your imagination sanctified in this day and in this hour. God wants to speak to you. Did you hear me? Through That's dreams. Right. Expect your children to have dreams. Expect your grandchildren to have dreams. Read the Bible with them before they go to bed. Be careful of how they, what, you, or what they're watching and monitoring those things. And let me say this as well. We're going to talk about this in just a moment. We're going to talk about how to be able to maintain those things, Put th putting things in place to watch what they're doing on media and even for yourself to make sure also Tom that that is not a replacement for our walk with God and that brokenness within us we're trying to feed it through media versus going to the well and receiving from Jesus well, Christ. Well the well is a good analogy because in, in scriptures it talks about um, Paul talks about the washing of the water of the word in, in one of the epistles the washing of the water of the word because our minds need to be washed. We, even in, in the first century, they needed to be washed from, from wrong attitudes and wrong things. Now there's wrong media, there's wrong things that are coming towards us and there's things that we can find ourselves, Pastor Jay, they can, we can find ourselves kind of falling into. But the Word of God always brings us back to that pure Word, that, that pure place, that where our minds can be washed, where our hearts can be washed, where our conscience can be washed. All those things are in Scripture, that those things can be washed with the Word of God when we understand truth, because there is truth and it applies to us. God wants it, it, it to be in our lives in a special way. That's why the Word of God is so important. That's why reading the Word of God is key in all, in all these things. You know, um, uh, Pastor Jay, when, when I think about people that struggle, you know, the, the struggles with media are partially because of availability. It's yeah, just yeah. so available now. If you yeah. wanted to do something with pornography years ago, you had to get in your car, go down to a store, go, you know, maybe be seen, go in and, and do yeah. something. Now it's all in the hidden, hidden in your hand, you know, yeah. and, and that is the key. We have to be all the more diligent to be strong. We really do. I mean, it's everywhere. We are inundated uh, with sexual things. Uh, we, I think there's a thing on TV called DraftKings for gambling. Now you don't even have to go to the casino anymore. Oh. You can do it right here in house. Yeah, I, I mean, so I like sports, right? I follow sports on Twitter, social media, right? <laughs> I follow things about the Steelers. There are things that come up all the time, all the time to gamble. Like, and you know, I don't have, have any desire to gamble, but if someone was struggling with that, yeah, yeah. think of all those things where that's like a drug to somebody where, and it's right there all the time. So you have to be careful 
in what you're doing. Now, we're going to take a, a quick break. We're going to have a scripture and a time of ministry coming out of this because this is, we've had a discussion so far. We want to bring it down to what are the things that God is speaking to you about. And, and really, I want to make it practical too. What are some things we can do if we're struggling? We'll be right back. Anyone can make predictions about the future, but what God says is what matters. In What Does the Bible Say About the Future, prophecy expert Charlie Dyer delivers an insightful look at the end times, grounded not in human fantasies, but the revelation of God. Bible prophecy was never intended to tickle our imagination or satisfy our intellectual curiosity. God wants you to know about the end times so you can be confident in his eternal purposes. With a biblical understanding of the future, you'll be powerfully equipped to live with faith and hope today. Ask for your copy of What Does the Bible Say About the Future by calling 888-665-4483 or donate online at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. Well, we've had a great discussion so far today, sharing the Word of God with Pastor Jay, but we, we want to make this practical as well. We want to make sure that, you know, there is a positive coming out of this. Now, we've got a, a scripture here from 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 and 7 that's, that can be kind of tough, but it's what God wants us to hear today, and it's this. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. You know what I love about this and what's the positive in this? Because you can take that first part and say, oh my gosh, I had a bad thought. I'm yeah. not following <laughs> Jesus at all. No, if you take that and you say it purifies us, the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. purifies Amen. us. It doesn't just say it purified us. It, yes, we are purified but it purifies us. So it's an ongoing process of growth. It's an ongoing process of holiness. It's an ongoing going process of becoming the person of God we were meant to be. You know, sometimes, you know, we have to realize that this is a war that we're in uh, for your children. And we want to give you some practical things that you can do as well. You know, the Bible talks about that if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Now that's saying that literally go out and pluck out your eye, but it's saying that just because you have a right doesn't mean you should keep it in your life. You know, I think about there's some great things that you can put on your iPads, on your phones, uh, on your computers, a great resource that you can go to called Covenant Eyes. It's outstanding, it gives accountability. You can watch your children. Maybe you're a person that's struggling with it yourself. You can go to that and use that and have accountability partners shut down all those different apps. You know what's amazing, Tom? With Covenant Eyes, it has you shut down Safari and all those and you do everything through the app. And if there's anything at all that's questionable or anything like that, it immediately Immediately, it lets your accountability partner know and it tracks everywhere that you go. It even takes pictures of where you've been to let your accountability partner know what's going on. There's another thing that I think is so important as well too, in your homes, every cable box, if you have cable or whatever you have, there's parental controls. I don't care if you're a single man and you're by yourself and you're struggling. I don't care if you're married. Get somebody that doesn't struggle to put in a passcode that keeps all of that stuff out of your house. And I thought about Smith Wigglesworth. Mm -hmm. and people say, my goodness, isn't that being a little bit legalistic, Jay? Well, Smith R Wigglesworth raised people from the dead, but there's a story about a man wanting to bring a newspaper into his house. And he said, I'm sorry, you can't bring that into my home. Now people say, well, isn't that a little bit legalistic? Well, when's the last time you rose somebody from the dead? When we start raising people from the dead, we might understand there's a price, Tom, to walk in holiness, to have our imagination sanctified, that God can speak through us. And I believe that's the key, ladies and gentlemen. God wants to, us to sanctify our imagination, be careful of what comes into media, through the media, into our minds, because he wants to speak revelation through the light of his word into our lives that will help bring in the end time harvest, see our souls saved, see us walk right. in holiness and in the blessing of God. Well, I think you said some really key things, Jay, is that that we need to, first of all, if we're going to be the people of God, we need to do the things that are the basic things of, of Christianity. We need to walk with the Lord. We need to read the scriptures. We need to pray. We need to be in fellowship with, with one another. Those are all important things. They're the foundation of following after Christ. Now, 
there's a few practical things you can do as well. If you're struggling with pornography, you need to have an accountability partner at least. That's the first level where you're humble. See, humility, Satan doesn't understand humility. I always th love that, Pastor Jay. Satan does yeah, not understand like humility no. because he doesn't have it. Amen. So when we're humble, when we're open, then he's, he's, his power is weakened and we have a, a person that can pray with us, that can hold us accountable. Then there's another level, it's pastoral counsel. You can go to your pastor, you can say, hey, I'm struggling with this, I, I need some wisdom from the, from the Bible. But then there's another level of professional counseling, and I really believe in that, Pastor Jay, yeah. that sometimes we need Amen. that level, because a professional counselor can un unpack things that are inside our heart, inside our, that we don't even know are going on, that's like another level above pastoral counseling. Some pastors are tremendous counselors, some are good preachers and not quite as strong as counseling, but we need to be a, a, have those levels in our life so we can achieve victory. Amen. And then when we find out what's broken, we can come back to the word of God, yeah. find out how to find wholeness from that instead of those other things. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so vital that we get all of this under control today because I believe this is the good news. There's so much more that God wants to speak to us, Tom. There's so much more he wants to bring into our lives. I believe he wants to unlock his word in our children. I think he wants to see moves of God in our schools, but I think we have to be careful of what we're allowing into our minds so God can sanctify that imagination and use Use it to create out of the unseen realm into the seen realm. See powerful things happen like in the days of Daniel. And imagination, think of what it is used for. It's not just to write stories and to create, you know, uh, you know movies or whatever. It is uh, wherever you work, whatever you're Amen. called to, your imagination, God can drop things in there when you're in tune with them. He mm. can drop things in that are like, Lord, help me to solve this problem from a factory that I work in. Help me to solve this problem from, if you're a policeman, help me to solve this problem on the, on the force here. Help me to solve this problem here or there. Those creative things can come to us. Pastor Jay, I just want to take a moment. Will you yeah. just pray with the people out there yeah. for, for this, that their imaginations will be sanctified. We have, just have a minute. Father, thank you today for this wonderful time. And I just want you to lay your hands on your mind right where you are. Father, I thank you today that our minds are sanctified, our imaginations are sanctified, that your grace is coming alive in us, oh God, that your word is going to come alive, that we are going to have wisdom on how to navigate social media and all the things that are going on that you can begin to speak to us in a supernatural way. Father, I pray for every family member. I pray for parents that are pouring thank into their Lord. children as well, Father. Bless them and give them all wisdom and we thank you for it now in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Such an important discussion. Of course, the most important discussion is do you know Jesus? Amen. Do you, are you one that has started that journey? Maybe it, it, uh, you hear us talk about where sometimes it's, it's a difficult journey, and it is, but it's the journey we all need to take. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, just open your heart right now. Open the door of your life and say, come into my life, forgive me of my sins, be my Lord and Savior, and he will respond to that. And you're going to find a purpose in life. And you know what else? You're going to find hope today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, rise up and get equipped with prophetic revival tools. Ordained minister and author Annette Caps encourages every believer to be knowledgeable and practiced in the gift of prophecy so you can take your place in the coming revival. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.